All right, today we're going to talk about a new assignment that we've got. We're going to send some supplies to you to build a test light. So I've got a couple of different things here I'll show you um, about what we're going to build, and then we'll go through some of the parts and pieces that I'm going to mail to you uh, so that you can put this together and take some pictures, share it with all of us. Should be a fun project. We get to build some cool things, some interesting ones that students have built in the past. Um, so yeah, let's take a look at what we're going to do. So first, let's talk about the two different types of circuit testers or test lights that we might find or have in a shop. One is a really simple one like this, generally referred to just as a test light. Um, it's only got two leads, right? So I typically have a clamp that I could put someplace. Here, I'm going to put it on ground. And then if I had power, like from this jump pack, whenever I touch that, I get a light. And it is just a bulb with two connections. So it doesn't mind in terms of where my polarity is at. I get a light or I don't get a light. And so I have to exercise some judgment about where I put this connection. Uh, so pretty simple, only a single light source inside. The alternative that I've got could be something like this, uh, which is often referred to as a logic probe, right? So this one says automotive logic probe on it. They come with two leads, right? And so one of them is meant for power. I'm going to connect that to my jump pack there, connect this one on the ground side. And so now what happens is my logic probe has got two LEDs in it. I've got both polarities established here. And because of how LEDs function, um, being only one way, I can go to my ground. And here I get a green light, go to my power, and I get a red light. And so this is the type of test light that we are going to build. Um, a logic probe. So first thing we got to do is I'm going to ask for all of you to provide an address so that I can put the components in an envelope like this and send them to you. In that envelope, you're going to get three LEDs, at least two different colors, so that we can see a polarity switch. Um, one is an extra, just in case we make a mistake and we damage an LED. And then also two resistors. Again, we only need one but they can be fragile as we work with them over and over. And so we will provide two just in case. And then lastly, I'm gonna include two lengths of the wire in case you don't have this on hand um, at your house or wherever you're working on this project so that you can establish a couple of the different leads. And so there's lots of different ways that we could build this. Two of the examples that I've got from past students. Um, this one was a student Colin built this one out of a fishing lure, right? And so he actually had to take the inside of it, um, carve it out, put all the LEDs and everything in there. He provided a, a test lead here. There's where you can see the LED. And then the other side, he was able to put an alligator clip on this. So that's just one example of being creative. Another one here, a little bit more basic, but uh, good utility. So this was a Matco test light. And so you can see this was Caleb um, a couple of years ago. Took all the guts from the outside, from the inside out that had an incandescent light in it and then put his LEDs and resistor configuration inside of there. So those are just a couple examples of ways that we could build one of these. I'll put some pictures up on the screen too and we'll talk through how to do that. So here's our diagram, pretty simple. I've got my resistor in series with both my LEDs in parallel. And if you look closely, the, the critical thing in this process is that each LED goes a different direction. And that's what's gonna give us the logic probe functionality that we talked about. So when you get your LED out of the envelope, you'll notice one leg is shorter, one leg is longer. That helps you understand which is the anode, which is the cathode. And if you wanna understand more about that, I'm gonna push you to do a Google search or check our textbook um, to understand which does what and which way the current's going to flow. The other important note that I've gotta leave you with is that anytime you power up your LED, it has to have a resistor. LEDs cannot flow current um, without a resistor in place. The current will exceed the limit and it will blow the LED. So if you do that just even once, the LED will pop and then it will not function anymore. So be extra cautious, make sure you've always got a resistor in place. If you run into problems or you have questions, send me a message. Um, I'll, I would love to help as much as I can. Can't wait to see what everybody comes up with.
And what we'll do is once you get your test light done, I'm gonna ask that you take some pictures and take a short video of it working. You can use your own car battery for this, um, or in a lot of cases, a nine volt battery will work just enough to light them up and verify the operation. And then we'll make a poll and we'll see who has the most creative test light, uh, maybe who has the most efficient or, or kind of utility version of a test light and have some fun with it, give out some prizes somehow. I usually give out prizes, uh, but I'll figure out a way to do that. So again, excited to see what you come up with.